previously on Riggs Diggs. Here we go. Which direction do you think it's going to be? Hmm. I'm sort of hoping that way. <laughs> I'm hoping not that way. Why do I say things like that out loud? Which way to go? Which way to go? I can't even see which way it went. Oh, there. <gasps> it did go that way. All right. So off we go. Hey, welcome back. Riggs here, and I hope you enjoyed that little uh, reminder. Yeah, last time we... Uh, we threw the first Ender Pearl, and we're going to continue off in that direction. And I have a new way of kind of finding the uh, the End Fortress. What is it called? The the Stronghold. Yeah, um, using a method called triangulation. And I know it's a big fancy word, but uh, really it's just a way of basically getting a little bit more information using your first couple of Ender Pearl throws. And uh, it'll save you some time, and we're going to get back to that. But I want to show you around some of the things I've done around here. But uh, welcome back. So I wanted to quickly talk about the process of finding the End Stronghold. And basically what you're doing is you're throwing the Eye of Ender up in the air. And by, by the way, it's not an Ender Pearl. Uh, quick story time. My very first survival world, like seven or eight years ago, I was finally ready to go find the End Stronghold. And I got some Ender Pearls. And the first one I threw up in the air and I looked around and I thought okay which way is it going to go and I was really confused when I it didn't go anywhere <laughs> and I did this a few times before I finally figured out the whole uh, yeah you need a blaze rod thing anyway but um, the process of finding the stronghold and unfortunately it won't work in a creative world is but you throw this up in the air and it will head off in the direction of a the stronghold it'll basically give you a line that uh, where the stronghold is and that gives you a little bit of information about as far as which direction to go, but it does not give you any information about where on that line the stronghold is going to be. And in math, there's this thing that basically says that any two lines that are not parallel, in other words, not like this, any two lines that are like that <laughs> are going to define a point. Like it's going to basically point to a point. So. When you're throwing the Eye of Ender, you throw your first one, and that gives you the first line. And what I have always done is I, you know, I go along this line, and I throw it again, and it sort of continues off in this direction. Let me make sure I'm still along the same line here. Yeah, it'll continue off in this direction. And you kind of keep doing that for a while, but you have really no idea whether it's going to be 100 blocks or 1,000 blocks or anything like that. So what I am going to do, and what I hope will save me some time, is... Uh, I did that first throw, but now what I'm going to do is actually I'll probably go off to the, the east, but I'm going to go off to the side and I'm going to make another throw. And so I'm going to throw from here. And when this gives me a line like this, it will very quickly point to maybe not the very specific area where the end stronghold is going to be, but it's going to give me a lot more of, a, of an idea about what area to start getting really careful in. And so, yeah, basically it'll be like X marks the spot. You know, you make two lines and it's they're going to meet somewhere. And that is hopefully where the uh, <laughs> the end portal or, yeah, the end portal is going to be, um, although not in a creative world like this. So anyway, that's the process we're going to do. And I hope that uh, makes some sense to, to somebody out there. Did I lose you? <laughs> I hope that was interesting. But I, I did want to show you a few things. Yeah, I've been do working on making the kind of what people have been calling God armor. Yeah, you can stack these uh, enchantments now. But one thing I did want to show you is the enchantments you're getting out of the enchantment table are pretty lame. That is a 30th level enchantment and I'm getting sharpness one. I mean, I guess I got unbreaking three, but it wasn't showing that to begin with. So definitely I feel like a nerf in the enchantments that you get out of the uh, enchantment table. And then I've been doing some AFK fishing and I have yet to get one mending book. So I'm curious if there's anyone who's watching that has been playing 114 and has a auto fishing farm. Have you been getting mending out of the fishing? I'm wondering if it's been removed from the, uh, the, uh, the, the loot tables for fishing. I don't know if that's like a little stealth nerf, but uh, I'm just curious. So uh, let me show you a couple more things. All right, and last time I showed you the design for the little kelp farm, so I got to work over here. I'm just uh, across from the bamboo farm, which we just will, this will tie into. But yeah, the idea is it's gonna be just stacked up with uh, rows of kelp, and then I can build a wall across here that will have glass, and then I'll fill it in with water. 
and we'll have it all set up with the bamboo farm to, to create endless kelp blocks, but more importantly, a whole bunch of experience from the uh, furnaces, or actually with the kelp, I can use the smokers uh, to cook it uh, twice as fast, which will be nice. All right, and I am clear on the other side of the swamp over here with the jungle and swamp villagers, but yeah, I worked on the sort of the under, under bit of the, uh, the villager breeder made a little little base here and kind of worked on the walls a little bit so I think that looks a little better I still need to get uh, rid of the, the rail cart line but yeah I think it looks nice I need to um, get some lanterns over here I'm still being a little bit conservative with the lantern spam I'm kind of using my iron conservatively because I want to get a beacon going at some point um, but yeah, uh, these guys have been active. <laughs> there are a lot of them, and I need to get rid of a few of them. Obviously, um, I've worked on the villager transport system, you can see there. But what I've been doing over here in the meantime is I come over here and I place down a lectern, and then I play hide-and-seek with the librarian. This has been sort of a funny process, but I come over here and been looking for mending. And I've spent a long time doing this. And um, haven't gotten mending yet. Unbreaking actually isn't a bad one. I'm sort of tempted to trade with that guy, but just wanted to show you the process here. And <laughs> basically do that, and uh, hopefully this guy has had a chance to change. Yeah, multi shot. Okay, so then I come over here and I do it again. But um, yeah, this has been kind of a funny process. But I need to set these guys free. Uh, but I also need to to kind of get ready for them a little bit better over there. But I did want to kind of test out the transport system uh, with you guys because I think it might be a little bit interesting. There you are. Multi-shot. I haven't had a chance to change yet. Hmm. Anyway. Hmm. 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 Um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's try that out. Let's see how this thing works. I'm going to figure out how to do that uh, maybe one at a time. I switched into spectator mode real quick just to give you a, a sort of clearer picture of what's going on here. I have a glass wall here at two blocks high, so grown-ups <laughs> will not be able to fit into these trap doors once I open them, but the, the children will, and so eventually I will empty out all but four of these grown-ups, and to do that I'm going to have to use one of these sticky pistons, I'm going to pull back a glass wall, but then the villagers will come down here and follow this water stream to a little bit of this soul sand bubble column, which will give them a little bit more altitude to continue the trip all the way down here to this uh, very temporary holding cell, which will at least get them far enough away so that the villager breeder can keep going. But I should get back into survival mode and sleep, so I'll do that. Actually, let's do the villager transport next time, but I want to get going to the end. But before we go, I wanted to show you a couple of things that I found underground that will be useful. So I have kept up with the panda breeding as well. So I'm slowly getting uh, inundated with just panda everywhere, which is kind of fun. But down here, uh, let's see here, right down this way. I have a water drop, good. <laughs> um, yeah, I found a... One of these cave spider spawners, man. And if there's one thing in Minecraft that still gives me the creeps, it's these little tiny blue spiders. Uh, I do not like them. <laughs> so I've been getting to work clearing this out, um, and we'll we'll get that working. So I'll have endless string, which will be nice for endless uh, scaffold. That'll be great. So, uh, but yeah, let's get to finding the end. Let's do that. All right. Let's get going to the end. And uh, let's see, here, right here on the map, this is the uh, green point is where the map is in the item frame that we are looking at. Um, but we threw the pearl from right about here, and it went off kind of in this direction. So if we wanted to, we could put down more maps, you know, one where we threw the pearl and another, you know, it's sort of sighted off to you know, somewhere off in that direction. So it essentially pointed off basically north but like a little bit off like kind of in this direction something like that so what I am going to do is I'm going to head off over here ish something like that and I'm going to throw a pearl and it will either point in like this direction you know or it'll point like out here or it'll point somewhere in between but it'll give us a lot more information about how far along this line we should be searching. So I'm going to get going. And oh, I also wanted to mention that um, oop, down there, 
Near the cave spider spawner, I also found a zombie spawner. Actually, two zombie spawners that I might even be close enough to use together. So I have some very specific plans to use those in conjunction with the villagers. So you may see where I'm going with that. But uh, yeah, let's get, head off in this direction, and uh, I'll see you in a second. All right, so I did a little traveling off to the northeast, picked a few flowers you can see there, and um, yeah, here we are on the map. You can see there, and uh, let, me put, let me throw these down on the ground so we can take a look at what we're dealing with. That one there, and this one here. So we threw the first pearl from right about here, and it gave us a line something like this is sort of what I was picturing. Something like that, like not quite straight up and down north, but just a little bit off. And so from here, I'm going to throw this pearl. I keep saying pearl. It's an eye vendor. Um, and I'm going to pay attention to where it goes. And it'll give us a point to go to. And I'm going to, I, I made a copy of a map. And so I'm going to throw down another map and it'll give us a line. <laughs> and then we can sort of link it up with this line. And it'll give us an idea about where, you know, sort of how far to go. Now, if it points off in this direction, which is possible, um, it means it's pointing to a different stronghold because there are actually three strongholds within um, about 1,400 and like 2,700 blocks of spawn, and spawn is right about here. So there are these rings where these end uh, fortresses, end strongholds are. And actually, there are more as you go out. There are bigger rings uh, as you go out there's you know all the way out to about, about 27,000 blocks there are these rings of end uh, fortresses um, and there are more and more of them so you know as you get out there's like a ring of you know 36 end fortresses all spread out so um, yeah I thought that was kind of cool I should sleep before I throw this pearl so I'll do that okay it's morning and Ready for the first, or the second throw now. Pay attention to, all right, goes off in that direction right there. I'm gonna sort of follow that down to, yeah, basically those birch trees over there. So I'm gonna go over there, and I made a copy of this map, and I'm gonna throw that down on the ground over there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you over there. Zoom. All right, and here we are at that birch tree. Zoop. Let me get out here and we can throw this map down. I think I have another, yeah, item frame. And do I have another copy? No, here's the other copy. There we go. So there, that gives us another, ooh, look at that cool area. I have to go check that out. And a flower forest over here, that's kind of nice. Okay, let me do this thing again so we can look at both maps at the same time. Let me get these sorted here. There we go, okay. So. Yeah, the first line was something like this, something like that, something like that. And now this line is, yeah, again, not quite up straight up and down north, but uh, a little bit off. So I'm thinking right about this area. Um, so I'm not even going to bother throwing until I get right about there. And um, yeah, I'm going to do some exploring on the way. But uh, yeah, that has, at least saves us a few throws while we're, we're, we're getting closer. So I should mention, because it's kind of neat, this process that we just did, we had two known points. Those are the, the points that we threw the Eye of Enders from. And then the direction that they went off in gave us an angle. And that angle defined a line, right? And so those two lines are defining a point. And that process is basically triangulation, which is like trigonometry and geometry. And it's like math and stuff. So math here happening, and it's it's useful. So I, I I hope you're okay with that. You just you just got mathed. Oops, I should put that back. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna head off in that direction, and I'll see you in a sec. Just wanted to quickly show you this huge cave. There's an Enderman in there, so I have to be careful. And there's lots of other baddies. There's the whole welcoming committee coming out. Um, you're not gonna do well in the sun, guys. Um, yep. Did you get your sunscreen on? Nope, nope. I didn't think so. Uh, yeah, that's not going to end well for you. Um, but I should I should ski daddle. But I just wanted to show you that. Guys, guys, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. All right. All right, I've been cruising through the dark oak forest so fast I set off a forest fire. Also, the lava probably helped with that too. Um, yeah, there was a lava pool over there. and uh, But yeah, I've been enjoying the little parkour that 
dark oak provides you Whoop. and um yeah just getting off the edge of the map so should be good to go for a oop yep a um another eye of ender throw and we'll see how close we're getting i should probably make another map as well but um yeah maybe i'll try to find a little bit of an open area and continue along here just for a second yeah i see a little clearing there so uh yeah uh, we'll see how we do all right i've gone a little farther and i put down a map so you can kind of see where we are this is the general area where i think it's going to be somewhere close by, so let me do another throw. I guess I'll face north again just for consistency's sake. And, oh, all right. So off in that direct. Oh, and that one broke. Darn. Well, that broke one anyway. And that gives us some information. So that tells us back this way and probably not too far because, remember, this line was showing us that it, it was not, like, in this direction, certainly. So probably not even as far as where the map yeah, I bet we're pretty close. So I'm going to go a little bit further over there and maybe even just start digging and see what I find. All right, I was going to attempt another quick throw. This dark oak forest is awkward at best <laughs> uh, for a place to throw. This is as good as you get as a clearing. So let me just see. I don't... I didn't even see where that went. Do you think it went down? Yeah, that's why this dark oak forest is kind of trouble. I'm going to take a look around, but maybe it went straight down. I don't know. Um, hmm. Well, yeah, I'll do some investigation. Well, I took a look around and couldn't find the Eye of Ender, so I'm just going to dig down. I brought a stack of ladders just for this purpose so I can dig down safely, and I'll do the thing where you, you, know, you dig down on one side and then the other uh, and see what I find. So I found a mine shaft, uh, and then there's some cave spawners, uh, cave spider spawners over there. So I went running in fear in this direction, but look what I found. Oh, it's very dark, I know. Hold on, let me get uh, some torches up. Yeah, the end stronghold. So here we are. Um, oh, and there's the <laughs> there's the achievement. So we found it. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I need to... Uh, do some exploring through here. This is, looks pretty chaotic. Um, so I'm going to maybe, uh, yeah, I'll, give me a second. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. All right, I did some looking around. It's a kind of crazy open spaces. Uh, so I've created a little safe house here for my forward operating base for the end fortress exploration, which we will do next time. And uh, hopefully find the end portal and maybe even fight the end dragon. But I'm also going to get to work back at the base doing the uh the kelp farm and some villager trading stuff and uh yeah lots to do and um but i appreciate whoa <laughs> i appreciate your time eh? and uh thanks for watching guys always appreciate the kind words in the comments and uh until next time it's been Riggs, and i love you i'll see you soon Bye bye